York City. It's the Wendy Williams Show. The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. With all due respect, have several seats. My girls are always turned out. I give it to you straight, no chasers. out of my chest. I am so out of breath. I am so glad to be back with you. Thank you. I mean, we've only been gone since the end of July. It's only like, what, six weeks, eight weeks? But it seems like forever. Thank you, I lost a few pounds. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Uh, look, look, so many hot topics to talk about. I know, I've been seeing you in the grocery store, I've been seeing you in the, in the hardware store, I've been seeing you on tour. I'm very excited about the talented Neil Patrick Harris being here today. Yes, yes. So, uh, like you, I also had a very busy summer. I filmed a movie in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> Part, big stars, Zac Efron. Whoa! Listen. The, 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 mo the movie is called Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates. It's a comedy. And I play myself. And I was only in Hawaii. It wasn't glamorous. I was only there for 48 hours. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but Zac Efron was so young Hollywood lovely. And, uh, yeah, mm, that's what I said. Mm, mm. And the movie co-starred Adam Devine, who was absolutely divine. You know, he, pl he plays, Adam plays Manny's nanny on Modern Family. Right? Yes. And so, so I didn't want to fan out, cause you know, I, like I didn't want to say, can we take a picture? You know, and I, like I, I was trying to be cool, cause you know, it's young Hollywood. I didn't want to be like old Miss Wendy. <laughs> but at the very end, when they they yelled cut, Zach fanned out. <laughs> and Zach, Zach, you took the picture. Can you please send it to me? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the movie will be out like next summer. Anyway, I also performed my sit down tour 16 cities around the country. Oh my God. <laughs> so 
So my last show of the tour was this past Saturday night in Morristown, New Jersey. <laughs> Yes, I was dressing like that all summer for the sit-down tour because I wanted to make a differentiation between talk show Wendy and ratchet Wendy. And uh, that's my DJ Omanaya. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's so good to be back planted yep. in New York, isn't it? Yep, yep, yep. Um, by the way, if you like my romper, um, my next presentation on HSN will be on September 26th, and that is one of my presentations. Yeah. <laughs> so, the most important thing that happened this summer, which was a life-changing thing for the Hunter family, is, that's, my, you know, my marital name. Okay, okay, okay. Our son was, um made exposed to synthetic marijuana. Oh. And he was exposed by, you know, a loved one who he looked up to. Oh. And it's one of those pens where you don't see the smoke and you don't smell anything. And you know, you and I have known each other for years through the TV. And you know, I'm the mom, I'm flipping rugs, I'm going through Nike boxes in his room. I'm always, I'm telling you how to flip the, you know, the ceiling and figure out what's going on. Well, I was duped. And our kid had been smoking this mess. And he got turned out. And to the point where he went off the rail for a moment. And the reason that we, me and my husband and my son, we, we're choosing to share this with you. This is not a surprise to any of us. We've had several family meetings over the summer, and it was so hard for me to be on the road because Kevin and Kevin were not there with me, and I'm trying to make funny on the, on the tour, but in actuality, my heart is breaking, and my kid could have been dead. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So, and we have always kept it real, so why should we be fake now, me and you, right? <laughs> Um, you know, to the parents and guardians watching right now, just talk to your kids. Yeah. This, this, this synthetic marijuana, the boy, it, there was only like 2% THC in it. The rest of it was factory manufactured mess. Fortunately, Kevin has two parents who took harness of the thing. We took him out of the country for holistic treatment. Now, I don't, we didn't want to pump him with psychiatric drugs and all that other kind of mess. I'm glad to say that our boy is on the good side of good now. <laughs> He's good. He's good. But, but, you know, it could happen to me. It could happen to you. Yes. It's happened to many. Yes. And I just want you to know, for more information on synthetic marijuana and the devil that it is, go to wendyshow.com. Thank you. So, one of the other big hot topics of the summer was me falling. Now look, I was wearing my poom poom shorts and my white t-shirt, I was feeling young. I had on sneakers, who falls off sneakers? Me. Anyway, you know, I've said to you, how many years have we known each other? I always say, my, the fear is I don't want to fall. You know, we're live out of New York. If I fall, all I say is keep the cameras rolling. I want you to laugh. Just pull my dress down, okay? <laughs> just, just pull my dress down. Well, um, I always told you that I was scared of falling. Well, apparently, you know, I am... Well, they, and I haven't seen this footage, my staff, as loving as they are, <laughs> and they asked me did I want to see it, and I said no, surprise me. 
they put together a tape piece. <laughs> Let's watch it together. Hit it. Where celebrities are constantly falling down. One talk show host is always there to laugh. But behind each laugh lies her biggest fear. I don't have a whole lot of fear, fear, fears. My worst fear is consistently falling. And when those double doors open, I just say, Jesus, take the wheel. Don't make me fall. I am deathly afraid of falling. And if I ever do fall and you guys see it, feel free to laugh. Well, if you saw TMZ this summer, you know fear became reality. Do you want to see it again only in slow motion? Our hero rises once more. Stay tuned, because you never know when Wendy might tumble again. But here's the thing, I'm gonna tell you right now, at 51, for those of you who do not exercise, if you fall, you will ache the next day. I bounced back like a 21 year old. Yeah. And I had no pain the next day. All I'm saying is move your body a little bit so that when you fall, it won't hurt. Yeah. Okay, let's move on, let's move on. Jennifer Aniston. I owe you an apology. Oh. I'm a woman and I'm allowed to be fickle. <laughs> I always said that you were a wounded bird, damaged goods, you'd never get married, nobody wants you. <laughs> on account of, I think that she wears that hurt from Brad so much on her sleeve that she's so won't, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Well, apparently I was wrong. And I can admit that over the summer, she finally married her fiance, Justin Theroux. Good for you. So they invited people over to their compound, which is just under 9,000 square feet. And the ruse was, you're coming to Justin's birthday party. But when they got there, Jimmy Kimmel's standing there with a Bible to officiate. <laughs> there were 75 people, it was a surprise wedding. Aww. Now, in my mind, I expected the whole cast of friends to be invited. <laughs> Only cause, you know, even though I'm a part of entertainment, I am very much just a girl from, Jer I go back to Jersey. And, and I'm, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> And so, yeah, I was hurt and wondering why wasn't Ross there? <laughs> David Schwimmer was not there. <laughs> and apparently she's still fighting with her mom. Her mom wasn't there. <laughs> but, well, it is terrible, but you never know the reasons that these people cross you. You know what I'm saying? She was engaged for 1,086 days. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> 1,086 days she was engaged and she finally got married. I, honestly, you've heard me say it many times, I never thought it would happen even with her being engaged. I just figured he wouldn't. But I'm happy for her, but I'm still, I'm still skeptical. Because you know what? You girls, you concentrate so much on a wedding that after the wedding, now I'm looking at the clock like, okay, the divorce, um, when? <laughs> I don't 
want a divorce for her, but this is the only reason why I'm thinking something might happen. Yes. Because they brought a bunch of people on their honeymoon. Yes. Would you look at this picture of Bora Bora? No, not, yes. Is that gorgeous? Yes. But she brought a ton of friends, including, including, um, this is, um, Jason Bateman and, and, he, and his wife, and then his kids came. <laughs> Howard Stern was there on the uh, honeymoon. Um, 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 Courtney Cox was there, and she brought, look, no, not just Courtney, honey. I mean, <laughs> sorry. I get so comfortable with you. I didn't mean to call, honey. <laughs> Not just Courtney, she brought her teenage daughter, Coco. Oh. Now, this is on a honeymoon of a woman who has it, who, like, why do you? Not why. Who does that? <laughs> and then, right after they got back from Bora Bora, both of them left for separate movie locations. Oh. Now, I'd be fine with leaving for separate movie locations if we were romantical, just me and you, on the honeymoon. In conclusion, I'm happy, <laughs> but I'm skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so what Serena Williams lost the U.S. semifinal on Friday? I mean, it's, it's a big lose for an athlete, but I hate that you all are blaming Drake. <laughs> like, why are you blaming Drake? Because you think he was probably blowing her back out the night before? And, and, and she wasn't able to concentrate <laughs> on the game? I don't know. I mean, she's the one who's the elite athlete. You can have all the boyfriends you want. If you're the one... With, who's the athlete, then you're the one to say, no, baby, don't come over tonight. Nope. You know, I'm eating my Wheaties, I'm icing my feet, I'm sitting in the bathtub, I don't, I don't need, you know, I'll see you after the match. So, I don't blame Drake, I don't blame anybody. Um, I don't even think this is a real relationship. I'm gonna s say it like you mean it. That's our, yep. <laughs> Shout it out. This is what I'm saying. By the way, you're really cute. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're really cute. Are you single? Are you single? Okay. Cute. This is my thought. Like, I like Serena and I like Drake. But Drake... At tw or, Serena is 33 years old, but she's been an elite athlete since she was a goober, yeah. which means her 33 is more like 53 in terms of what she's prepared for in life and where she wants to go at 33. Drake is 28 years old. He's cute as I don't know what, but Drake, to me, is a snack. That is not insulting. In life, there are snacks and there are main courses. Yeah. He is not the main course, he's a snack. In my mind, he's not ready to settle down. He's still up in the clubs, making it rain. He still probably, every once in a while, drives by Nicki Minaj house. And, and, and w what I'm saying is, and, Ser and Serena is a woman, and we're soft and pink, and, and sometimes, well, yes, we are. <laughs> you know, when we look too hard in a man's eye, you know, things begin to happen. 
And she can't afford to do that with Drake because he's not a keeper. He's not the main, he's a snack. So I think that she needs to find a more serious man. Yes. Like, like maybe. Like maybe the owner of the US Open or some hedge fund guy yes. or a nice cardiologist from Chicago. Yes. You know, I don't, this is not, so you all are t talking about this and I'm saying th this is not a real relationship. I don't care what you say, but I want to hear what you think about Serena dating Drake, okay? Answer today's question um, and use the hashtag, say it like you mean it or S-I-L-Y-M-I, -I, or Silly Me, for short. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm gonna share your answers later on in the show, okay? okay. I am so glad to be back, I have to. <laughs> The traveling, like I was on an airplane 34 times this summer. And we were only off for like six weeks. Back forth, back forth. I'd come back to Jersey, dump my suitcase out, check on my Kevins and I'd be back on the plane. And we had business obligations, so I had to, I had to do what I had to do, but it was real difficult. And then our whole family, because of the boy, we don't eat, meat anymore and we don't eat their, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, your favorite fatty is now an alkaline dietist. <laughs> you, <laughs> you might not know what that is. Google it after the show. It's more severe than vegan. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> Food is no longer my favorite thing. I only eat it so I don't fall down. Chris Brown, congratulations. Yeah. Major victory for Chris Brown over his baby's mother, Nia. Uh, the judge gave Chris joint custody of royalty. Royalty must see uh, baby North. So royalty is throwing major shade like, Who's that? <laughs> what, uh, what's she doing here? And, and daddy, I don't know these people either. <laughs> no, cute. Anyway, um, he only has to pay uh, Nia, uh, her, his baby's mother, uh, $2,500 a month in child support. <laughs> now remember, Chris and Nia weren't in a formal relationship. She was a little something that he snacked on while he was on the road. And, but I guess maybe the condom broke or maybe they didn't wear one. Next thing you know, payday for Nia. <laughs> by way of royalty. And, but, but out of it came that beautiful baby. And, you know, my thought is, is congratulations to Chris because, you know, while all of us and me have always criticized him for being less than smart and irresponsible and, you know, a stupid man and all that other kind of stuff, it turns out the judge who, you know, uh, look at, right? He is stepping up. You know what? The judge ordered Chris, um, Chris's mom, though, has to be there every time royalty visits. Which I don't see that as a problem. Cause I'm like, okay, go to grandma. Yeah. My boys are pulling up on the driveway now. <laughs> We're gonna have a little situation going on in the basement. And when it's done, I'll see you after, boo-boo. Give, give daddy a kiss. <laughs> but I, I think this is great. Now, the problem is, and so far the results are not back, the judge is gonna be doing hair follicle tests. <laughs> now, if you are Chris Brown, wouldn't you just shave everything? <laughs> Including your eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> you just shave everything. <laughs> Congrats.
Congratulations, Chris. We've got more great show for you. Up next, the one and only Neil Patrick Harris is here. So grab a snack and come on. the summer's hottest topics. So, are you ready for more? Yes! Yes! And it wouldn't be New Wendy without juicy celebrity surprises. She's huh. trying to keep us on the down low, but we're blowing up her spot right now. <laughs> Tomorrow on an all-new Wendy. Our first guest is a talented, award-winning actor with a brand new variety show. It's called Best Time Ever with Neil Patrick Harris. Take a look. Best Time Ever is the biggest show I've ever been a part of. It's essentially seven shows happening simultaneously. It's a party. I will go undercover to prank unsuspecting celebrities. Here goes nothing. Gwen Stefani from No Doubts. She's beautiful like dog. No, that one's not good enough. Bleak, now that you're a successful coach on The Voice, what else do you coach now? What else do I coach? The Little League. <laughs> Please welcome to our show, Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> Custom made, like you are the dapper man. Yeah, I see. Gucci, it's Gucci. Gucci. Yeah. You, um, wow. How are you? Good. This is my first time on your show. I'm very excited. I, uh, me too. I know. Look, I my want. My husband was on it. Your husband was here, but first I want to give you some shoe cam. Look at these. Put your. Those are fantastic. Are you the clothing? They're, they're Jimmy shoes. Jimmy Choo shoes. Oh, Jimmy Choo's, yeah. J Jimmy Choo's. <laughs> um, do you uh, love clothes or do you get styled? Um, yes. To, to both. <laughs> I love clothes, but I learned from the, uh, from the How I Met Your Mother show that uh, Barney wore a nice fitted suit. And so I learned the value of a good suit. It's a nice thing to put some money By in. By the way. It really is. And it's better, you know, it's better probably to buy a, a, a not so expensive suit uh, if you're worried about cost and spend a little more money on, on having alterations. It, yeah, on having it look That's good. what I always say. You don't want to buy a really expensive suit and then have it still fit crappily. Right. Crappily. Is that a word? Crappily? <laughs> So craptastic. So, so David, your husband was on last season. Yes, he was, and he bought me popcorn that you guys popped the night before, which yes, was delicious. I helped make it with all the drizzle and stuff. Um, congratulations on your one-year anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Now, one-year wedding anniversary. We wedding. got married. That's a picture from our wedding. Uh, we we had the um, the big thing. Reception dancing at the end. Yeah. And then we to Katy Perry's fireworks. We had uh, we had fireworks go off and no one knew. So and they were timed to the music, which I couldn't imagine. We were in this tiny little town in Italy. Okay. So I did it wasn't a big place where you would think something like that would happen. Right, right, right. And they were going off perfectly timed. So that's us and our happy reaction See, to the I, fact that it was. I would out. think that that was gunfire. Was anybody nervous like it's, it's gunfire? <laughs> uh, I guess, I guess, yeah, it was probably loud to the neighbors. So how long were you together prior to getting married? Um, twelve, almost twelve years. What took, uh, not judging, no. just, no. what took so long? Well, legally, we weren't allowed to do much of anything <laughs> oh, for a while. Oh, God, God, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then for a small window, uh, oh. gay marriage was legal in, in uh, California. Yeah. But it was such a big deal when you went to the, when I saw people that were going to the courthouse, there were photographers, and it seemed like a big statement. So even, we, we weren't, well, we were in no rush to do it. Yes. So then I wanted that to kind of pass away. Yes. And, and then we could go and not have it be such a, I didn't want it to seem like a you big statement. You wanted to statement. do it on the low. Yeah, I want to do it kind of on the low. And, yeah. then, and then all of a sudden, prop, prop 8 passed, and it was suddenly not allowed, and I missed my chance. And then we were moved to New York, and sort of the same thing happened. So, But, you know, it's good. Some people have been together for 30 years. 
Uh, you yeah. know, opposite sex couples, and they're still not married, still and it's not totally married. fine. So, I mean, I marriage isn't for everybody, though, and that's what I always say, Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like marriage is. Uh, wouldn't you agree? I agree, double W. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> So now, you and David live in Harlem. Indeed. And you've got Harper and Gideon. Indeed. I read the Life and Style magazine and I, all the magazines. Every once in a while. Now, now let me just say, okay. I love that so picture. So the, the kids are twins. Which, uh, yes. But let me just say, Harper is going to be a problem. <laughs> those, How do you figure? Look at that picture. Those pooch lips right there. Yes. She's like, mm -hmm. Gideon is one minute uh, older and Harper's one minute taller, apparently. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Harper just got her hair braided. Now, do you go to the African braiders in Harlem? Because you live there. <laughs> do you I, I'm, I'm just saying. Did you braid the hair? Not only did we go, we live in between two hair braiding shops. Perfect. So we have the fantastic women are sitting outside right. in their amazing get-ups. Right. And they're super great. And I never thought Harper would want to because it's painful. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. She sat there for two and a half hours going... <laughs> well, don't let her get it done too much. It'll wear on her edges and her kitchen. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to teach my daughter about her kitchen just yet. Well, Can we wait a minute? Can we wait a hot minute before we get into kitchen okay. talk? Okay. So she got the hair braided yeah. and she's sassy and the kids are good. And they dress themselves, which is kind of fun. Yeah, Gideon's an awesome kid too. I love their style. They're super cool kids. New York is such a great place to raise kids. It really is just the best to be, to, because I think what is great about life is being immersed in diversity is being surrounded by people that are not like you so yes. that you can find your place and who you, your own identity and your own individuality Where around all kinds of other uh, opportunities. I'm from New Mexico, from a small town. I was born in Albuquerque and lived in a much smaller town. But I got to be in Rent the Musical, which was that diverse world. And so I got to live with these people who yeah. were nothing like me and were so empowering and just so great that it made me realize I didn't want to just spend my time thinking in a puritanical way that this is the only way it can be and this is the only way that it has to yeah, be. Yeah, you have a very so, open mind. Yeah, well, just raising kids here, you see that on the subway and in the park. You just interact with people yeah. and, and that's what's fun about it. Whether, it doesn't matter where they're from or who they are. Yeah. It's fun. It definitely kind of speaks to the show. By the way, I really like your tie. Thank you. Your, your tie just is pulling everything, like, together. Thank like, I'm checking you. you out, Neil Patrick I'm Harris. Okay. What about the package? You like the package? Um, so, tell us about your new show, <laughs> The Best Time Ever. Yes, Best Time Ever. It's, uh, it, it'll be on for eight weeks um, on Tuesday, starting tomorrow. Okay. And it's live. It's, a, it's sort of the new version of variety show, I guess you would say. What do you think when you hear variety show? Um, I think of a lot of razzle-dazzle. I think of um, um, skits being acted out. Yes. I think of man in the street. I think of lots of costumes and wigs and craziness. But I never think of it as being... I only think of morning TV. Like, we're live. Yeah. But I don't think of... See, that? yeah, I feel the same way. And variety show as a term kind of freaked me out because I think of... It makes me think of decades back. Well, me too. It makes me think of... Carol Burnett, which I loved, Me and too. Donnie and Marie, which was fun. But th I think this is a new time, and we watch TV in a whole different way now, right? Yeah. If it's boring, you change the channel quickly. Or, or if you, or you DVR everything and so then just sort of fast through it. So we have tons of segments, game, game show sort of segments where I'll bring someone up, ask them trivia questions, win a prize. We'll have celebrity guest announcers that'll be on different one every week. Reese Witherspoon is going to be our first guest announcer. Nice, She's amazing. Nice. Um, We'll have musical guests that'll come on, they'll sing. But the key thing with our show, and the reason that I think it's fun that it's live, is that the audience is a part of the show. So I will go undercover, and I will put on prosthetic makeup like you saw as a Jurgen and do that thing. But, but we'll have someone from that segment there live watching it so you get to be a part of it. But people in the audience won't realize that we have been following them for months and filming things with them without them even realizing oh. it for months. And so when I bring them up and sit them down, they have not been told by a segment producer that this, this is going to happen. And so then when does this start? Tomorrow night, baby. Oh, we're here. Listen, Neil's not going anywhere. Up next, we're going to get to know even more of Neil Patrick Harris when he sits in the hot seat. Oh, Don't miss it.
<laughs> Neil Patrick Harris is brave enough to sit in our hot seat. <laughs> and uh, we're going to ask Neil four questions, starting off warm, increasing intensity with the heat. Neil? I love what you've done to play season seven. <laughs> we smoked it out. Yeah, you did. Okay, Neil, you ready? Yeah. Here, here's your Where's 40... Snoop Dogg? Your 40... <laughs> Obviously, he's backstage. He's back. he's the next guest. <laughs> okay. okay, here's your 40 degree question. Okay, okay. Besides your fabulous husband, David. Dreamboat, yeah. Who's your celebrity crush? Oh. David knows it, so I guess it's not a bad thing to say. Um, Nick Jonas. Okay, yeah, uh huh. I mean, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. And he was really good looking before it was kind of allowed to think he was good looking. Right. Which was a bit of a problem. You kind of had to wait till he turned to be, you Yes. Know, yes. 19 to 20. <laughs> and then you're admit like, it. what is happening? Okay, here's your 60 degree question. Yeah. Um, I saw you in your tidy whities when you hosted the Oscar. <laughs> right. Now be honest. <laughs> Did you stuff? <laughs> Did, did, you, did you stuff? There was a lot of scrutiny about the underpants. Um, no, I did not stuff. But Lucky David. I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you, and I'll, my, here's my logic. I feel like stuffing would have looked way stranger. Because what is, how, what, what do you stuff with what? A sock? Uh, an orange? Tissues, what like you, we girls did in tissues, our bras when we were in eighth grade. But then look all mottled and strange down there. I'll tell you what we did do. We put the underwear on, and then we came out and uh, in the dress rehearsal, and they saw it. And they could see too much. Okay. So we had to go and get a second pair of underwear and cut it out and sew it over the first pair. You were wearing Spanx under your underwear because you were that no, out of control No, it was double because they didn't want to. They didn't want to know my religion. <laughs> okay. If that makes sense. Here's they didn't want to see the head of my hee haw. <laughs> Here's your 80 degree question. Yeah. Um, it you gets once, worse. You once wor worked with Madonna I did. in the movie The Next Best Thing. I did. Is she a diva in real life? Um, no, you know, making that movie was tricky because they did they did shots of her uh, camera tests, and so they realized that she really only looked great. Uh, to them in a certain position and the light was had a shadow right here like this and that's it she, she, So for every shot keep talking girl She could only stand like she could only do this So she was kind of not allowed to move at all in the yes. movie because if she moved around it would get in her shadow So everything was super still but no, I'm a massive Madonna fan. I think she's yeah. great. We all are I, just have I to mean, know she, more. Was, she had no attitude on set nice Okay, but I mean come on she's Fantastic. She has lived through chapters. Yes, she has lived. Reinvention. I'm a massive fan. Yes. You? You like her? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, it seems okay. like you're fishing. He, no, I, 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 I fish, but you I'm fish. a fan. But okay, I'm, that's, that's what I do. I'm back in the purple chair. I hear you. Do you know what I, I mean? Hear you. I hear you. Okay, look. I can't see you anymore. There's so much smoke, <laughs> so I, much I don't smoke. even know where you've gone. Okay, here's your last question. It's 100 degrees. Finish this sentence. Okay. And make it good. Okay. One time I got so drunk, hit it! Oh, wow. <laughs> One time I got so drunk, I woke up in my hotel room in Walt Disney World by myself around the toilet after having thrown up for six hours, having gone to the Adventurers Club at Walt Disney World and drank about 11 martinis. Yeah. Disney Harris, drunk. Clap it up for Neil Patrick Harris. The premiere of his new show, Best Time Ever, is tomorrow night at 10 on NBC. And his new book is called Choose Your Own Autobiography. Oh, it's yeah, available yeah. now on paperback. Everyone in the studio audience is going home with their copy. Yes, and we will be right back. the shade of it all. That's what you came here for, right? Plus, the fabulous Ava Mendez is here. She's a new mom, a fashion
designer, and she's sharing it all with us. Okay. <laughs> Wednesday on an all-new Wendy. Welcome back. It's time for Ask Wendy. How you doing? Hi, Wendy. My name is Keisha. How you doing? Good, Keisha. How can I help? Um, I'm actually dating this guy, and I've been dating him for about three months or so, and everything has been great. We've talked on the phone. We FaceTime every day. But now, all of a sudden, he's distant. Now, I think he's a great person, y'all, but I do not want to waste my time. What do you think I should do, Wendy? Three months is the mark. Three is the magic number. Mm -hmm. So it's now time to have the same conversation with him mm -hmm. and figure out why he's distant. Like, like, just lay your cards out. Are you in love? No. <laughs> are, are you in serious like? I like him. All right, talk right after the show. Okay. All right, call him over to your house. Yeah. All, right. All right. All right, very well, Keisha. Thank you. Up next... A new segment called Say It Like You Mean It. Don't go far. I want you to be my co-host. Come on and join my studio audience. The tickets are free. So go to WendyShow.com today. Dress to impress, and I can't wait to see you. <laughs> Welcome back. Earlier in Hot Topics, we were talking about Serena Williams and Jake, uh, Drake dating. And we asked Wendy Watchers to say it like you mean it on social media. So our first comment comes from Martha, who says, Drake is a smart dude. He's dating a female that's independent and needs nothing but love. Um, Dor Dorcas says, the problem with... I know. <laughs> The problem with rappers is that they can't commit. She should be ready to share him with groupies. If she's looking for something short-term, then so be it. If she wants something long-term, then Drake is the wrong person. Thank you. Eye Candy is next. Hey, Jessica Figueroa is here. She's my Eye Candy. Jessica, I've got a diva fan for you. Tell us about your look. Hi. Uh -uh. <laughs> um, I'm still holding on to summer, so I got my peachy dress. I got it for 15 on sale, and I paired it with my black shoes for $30. I love a diva on a budget. <laughs> Here's your diva fan. Thank you. And we will be right back. Thanks, Jeff. Tomorrow, lots more juicy hot topics. Plus, we're going to show you the latest fall fashion trends. It's good to be back. I love you for watching today. And I'll see you next time on Mandy. Bye-bye. Nice.